Welcome to the 50 Shades of Pain podcast. My name is Dr. Danny Shapiro, and I'm a doctor of physical therapy. If you're in pain or had terrible medical experiences, I will be telling you why the medical system is broken and why you probably feel stuck within it. If you've ever left a doctor's office and thought, what was that? Is that it? Well, then this podcast is for you. People need to start questioning their doctors. Now, I'm not saying this as a way to undermine a doctor. And whether we're talking about doctors, PTs, chiropractors, anyone you go to see for your health, mental health, it doesn't matter. Anyone who you go to see, start questioning them. The purpose of these questions is to make sure that you are in fact, given all of the details, all of the necessary information, understand why, if you're doing something, why you're doing that thing. If you're, whether it's a medication, um, you know, just making sure that, hey, the, the amount of stories I've heard of people getting medication and that medication is not even for them or that that medication, they're in fact alerted to it. And for one reason or another, the doctor missed it entirely. So even when it comes to medication, just double check, especially if you have allergies, just double check, hey, it, like this is for sure the right medication for me, even with my allergies or even with this situation or even with that situation, is this for sure the thing for me? Or if you're in pain and the doctor says, oh, stop doing squats, Right, which is a very common thing. As soon as you have any kind of knee pain, any kind of low back pain, hip pain, disc herniations, the doctors, for one reason or another, very, very common. I just had a young girl, like early 20s, just, just recently, she had a disc herniation injury and her doctor said, yeah, stop, stop everything. Don't bend. Like, are, are you kidding? That's ridiculous. That, that's insanity. Um, that's only going to keep someone living in more fear, more uncertainty. They want to get back to activity, but they were told not to do it with no reintegration plan, which uh, is a very big problem. Because if you don't have a plan of reintegration, well, what are you really doing? Uh, All right. You're just living your life in inability. And that's not really going to help you. That's not going to help push you forward. That's not going to help you to be healthy and regain your function again and be as strong as you want to be again and return to um, your baseline of function or at, at the very least better than your baseline, which is always the goal of therapy. When, uh, you know, with my approach, like I, I'm looking at it, okay, how can I make you better than before this injury even happened? How can I equip you with more information to keep doing the things you want to do for as long as possible? That's the goal, right? If we, if we can't do something, if we're sick with something, if we're in pain with something, right? The goal is to not be sick, not be in pain, get over the injury and get back to doing what you want to do. But, and this is the big but, right? We like big butts and we cannot lie. <laughs> uh, the big but here is if your provider takes things away, and sometimes it's necessary to take things away in the moment in the moment, not forever, but in that moment with a plan to reintegrate it back in. If that plan isn't there, question the life out of that. You have to question it. When can I go back to doing this? What should my actual plan be? If you're going to a doctor for pain, should I go to physical therapy? Which generally the answer is yes. Uh, you know, that that's what's the plan from here. Okay. Here's the issue. What is, you know, what do I got to do? Because otherwise you're just, you're stuck chasing your own tail. And you know, with the case of this girl that I just mentioned, uh, an orthopedic specialist told her not to do anything. That was the advice. And he's been suffering for seven months. Meanwhile, within a session, we were able to identify the true issue of the problem, which was not the disc herniation itself. But in fact, what was truly the problem at this point was the fact that her, mus her muscles and her joints just stopped moving. 
She extremely was limited in range of motion because of fear, because of anxiety, because she was worried that, okay, if I move, it's going to make it worse. Or that this thing is going to be, that's another thing, by the way, another, another big pet peeve of mine. All right. When, when someone has a disc herniation and the doctor says, well, this is for life now, that is the most ridiculous thing to say, especially to someone who's so young like her, uh, that, that was insane. Disc herniations are not for life. If you don't treat your body right after this craniation injury, that is when problems will begin. And that's what happened with this girl. She wasn't given a plan of any kind. She wasn't really given any true progressive therapy. And she was just kind of limit, living a limited life, which that's the more you limit yourself, especially through an injury, the more limited you will be. That's just the fact of the matter is like that. That's what the fact is. The more you stay away from activity, the more you will continue to be in pain. And this is kind of like one of those universal, universal facts. If you have a nerve injury, you got to find out the source of the nerve, like where the nerve compression is, work on fixing it, relieving pressure. If you have a muscle injury, okay, what is the actual problem? You know, where, what muscle, what muscles around it are, are being affected? How long is it going on for? How can we fix it? How can we get you moving again? Because again, movement is the answer. There are times when people come to me for therapy and they assume I'm going to place my hands on them and do some kind of manual therapy. Most of the time I don't because there's no need. If I can leverage your body with movement, then I can leverage um, your body using itself to heal itself and adapt to new movement, which is the goal. Our goal. The goal should always be movement freedom, right? Having the full freedom to move how you want. But to get there, the best manual skills in the world will not get you there. You moving your body will get you there in a strategic, targeted, biased way to help your body establish. Again, once you establish the baseline, you have to move from there, and that's how you're going to improve. You're not going to improve by just getting hands-on therapy all the time. That's not how the body works. And that's not how you're going to sustain long-term benefits, right? This is not to say that there are no short-term benefits, right? There's a lot of things that can happen with strategic use of manual therapy care. But relying on that alone is not nearly enough to create successful long-term outcomes. And that's really the most, the most important thing. You're not, you shouldn't be going to therapy or receiving or trying to go to, for medical care for the sake of short-term benefits, right? The goal is long-term. If you're going to the provider, they're only giving you short-term benefits. You need to go to a different provider. Simple as that. Uh, this is, again, universal across the board. If your doctor isn't listening to, find a different provider. If the provider is going to give you only short-term results with no explanation of why that's happening or a plan for longer-term results, um, if they're possible, like uh, th there's so many patients that have come through my doors that have been living week to week on short term results, never thinking that long term results were actually possible because all they were getting was either nonsense care at your traditional in network insurance based physical therapy clinic, which are all the same and don't provide any actual long term value or actual any good quality long term help. Um, you know, for some people it works and that's great, but for so many people, the cookie cutter method just doesn't work. You know, if you come in with knee pain, you're being treated exactly the same as the 20 people with knee pain that came in before you. The same thing goes for any other joint, but that's, for some people, that's enough. For some people, that is enough. But for many, 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 many people, that is not nearly enough. And you need an actual plan, a custom tailored plan for yourself to understand how is your, your body actually going to respond and how is your body going to grow from the current baseline that you are at um, but again it all comes down to going through an actual plan if there is no plan you will not get better if there's no plan to re reintegrate movements healthy functional movements there you're not going to get better you're going to continue living in a state of fear by the way squatting when people are told to stop squatting the reason why i think that is the most ridiculous piece of advice is because squatting is such a functional movement and a movement that you do every single day. You squat every single day. Every time you sit behind a table, every time you sit on the couch, every time you sit on the toilet, you're doing a squat. And I wish people just realized that. 
And uh, again, like if that's difficult, that's okay. Like we can, there are ways you can do, you can, you can manage around it. But I mean, squatting is a essential movement of life. You have to be able to squat uh, or at least get back to being able to squat. So look, bottom line here is if you are going to a doctor, chiropractor, a physical therapist, an acupuncturist, a massage therapist, just understand why you're going. Just understand what, what is the, what is the purpose of me going to this place, paying money, whether it's in the form of co-pays or for a private service, right? You have to understand what is, what is the end goal here? Is the end, is the end goal just to keep coming back? Or is the goal to actually understand how can you stop going to medical people or to providers? My goal for my patients is to not need me anymore. And there's a very big difference between need and want. My, I have a lot of patients who've gone to me and after we completed the plan of care, they no longer needed me, but they wanted to come in because they wanted to continue growing. They wanted to continue building. They wanted to continue improving and getting stronger and doing it, doing it in a safe manner um, and in a progressive manner. But they didn't need me anymore, which is the whole point. The whole point of therapy is not to need the provider. The whole point of chiropractor, the whole point of doctors is so that you don't need them. Because if, if you fix the problem, you don't need them until the next time if there is another problem that pops up. But that is the goal with every single one of my patients is to get them to the point where they do not need me anymore. Because if I could do that, then I've done my job. I've completed the goal. I've completed the calling, the, the reason why they stepped through my doors. If I can't do that, uh, at, at least for a condition that is supposed to have an end date, right? There are some conditions, there are some issues, which is just ongoing care. And that's, that's a little bit of a different story, right? For things that need to be managed long-term, right? That's a different story, but especially if there's an issue, something like a disc herniation issue or, um, right. Like a rotator cuff pain, you know, you had a rotator cuff injury, but yet you still have pain years down the line. And usually the reason is a lot simpler, um, than people think, but like that is, that has an end goal, right? Disc herniations have an end, have an end goal. There's a, there's a time when you're not supposed to need anything anymore. Uh, and that time varies per person, but that time does exist. Now, again, my goal is to get someone there to that point where they do not need me anymore because then again, I have done my job. So you need to make sure the reason why I started to kick this off with question your providers, question your doctors is because I want you to be able to have the most amounts of information to make the best possible medical decision you can going forward from whatever point you are at right now. So if someone recommends you some kind of pain medication, why am I taking this? And it's not just for pain relief. That's not, yeah, that's the answer. Yeah, it'll, it'll help you with pain relief. That's not going to fix your problem. That's just covering the problem up. But is the medication to alleviate the pain so I can start therapy? Is the point of the medication to rely on it for what's the purpose? Right? This is one of the biggest problems before I end this episode. <laughs> one of the biggest problems I feel like that exists in this health space is because of insurance, the, the way insurance companies run, the insurance companies run the whole game, right? Unless you're someone like myself who doesn't work with insurance plans and who is a free agent, I can do whatever I want that is going to be in the best interest of my patients. But the majority of the medical field is under the thumb and rule of health insurance companies. and they don't care about you, the patient, or you, the provider. They couldn't care less. All they care about is their billions in profit, and that is it. So time is not on your side or the provider's side. So they have to see as many people as they can to keep the lights on um, and to earn a decent enough salary. But that means that they have very limited time for you. So they're going to copy and paste a lot of different things across many different patients. So which is why you have to ask force them to spend another four and a half minutes explaining to you a little bit better and giving you a little bit more information and education about what the hell is going on with your plan of care and treatment, right? So 
again, if you're going to a doctor, ask them about that medication. What are the purposes of this pain medication? What's the end date on this pain medication? Where should I go? What should I do? Um, what, what is the, can you help me actually further to fix the problem, not just cover the problem up? Right. And they're saying, well, take this, you know, for now and to get your pain down, then you can start physical therapy. Right. For example. Okay. So when you go to physical therapy, they start doing something with you. Question that too. What is the purpose of this? Why are we doing this? What is, how is this actually impacting my body? Because the more you ask, the more you know, the calmer you'll be through the whole process. I make sure almost to a fault. To, it's kind of funny because I've had patients be like, yeah, Danny, that was really clear. That was like, that was probably too clear <laughs> because I want my patients to know everything that's going on. I will explain to you everything, why the pain is happening, what we're doing, what this exercise is doing, the purpose of it. Um, I'm going to give you all of the information. I'm going to, I'm going to take a Google translate. I'm going to Google translate the information in my head and I'm going to Google, I'm going to Google translate that to my patients in a way that they can understand what is actually happening in a way that's again, simple, easy to understand, and also inspires confidence and hope as opposed to confusion and fear. <laughs> that's the last thing I want for my patients. So wherever you are in the world, make sure you are requesting information. Information is gold. And you know, the more gold you collect, the richer you'll be. And, uh, the more information you collect, the richer you'll be, the calmer you'll be, the more certain you'll be, the more confident in the movement or whatever it is that you're doing, you will be. So please look out for yourself. Make sure you're getting the best that you can possibly get and make sure that, uh, you know, if someone doesn't give you the information, if someone says, oh, just trust me, oh, don't worry, don't take that. That's not an answer. That's nonsense. If you get that as an answer from any provider, you find a new one, period. That's it. So I hope this information helped you. I hope this episode was helpful. The goal of all these episodes is to inspire, educate, entertain, uh, but, but really, you know, emphasis on the educate part, because I, I want to make sure that wherever you are in the world, you are looking after yourself and you know how to look after yourself. Uh, and that's, that's really the goal. So I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope this was helpful. If you, uh, you know, tell me in the comment section, uh, what you want to see, what you want to hear about next, what you want to see next. And, uh, I'll cook that up for you. Have a great day.